Let's go. Trump just lost out on a very important Republican endorsement in a key swing state, and this one could really bite him in the ass due to the symbolic nature of it. Because every single time a Republican comes out and says they are putting country above party, every time a Republican comes out and explains that despite their Republican biases, they are still voting for the objectively better candidate who is VP Harris, it creates a broader permission structure for Republicans all across America who may feel hesitant to vote blue for one reason or another, or may feel like they have to vote red because they've done that their entire lives. So, that's why it's incredibly important for people like former GOP Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona to come out and endorse VP Harris and explain that he doesn't agree with her on every single issue. In fact, he disagrees with Vice President Kamala Harris on most issues, and that's okay because we all agree on democracy. We all agree that we need to protect the institutions that have existed since the inception of of America, and Donald Trump doesn't want to. Donald Trump has no moral guiding principles, he has a terrible, terrible character, and also he is so inherently authoritarian that he wants to rewrite the Constitution, say every election and court case is rigged, and overall just use rhetoric that is antithetical to the principles that America was built on. That is why we are seeing this unprecedented, historic shift where a bunch of center-right Republicans are coming out and saying, we can't get behind the Republican at the top of the ticket. I mean, if you told somebody in 2004 that the vice president, Dick Cheney, would be endorsing a Democratic candidate in 20 years or so, people would not believe you. But D Donald Trump is genuinely so bad that lifelong Republicans are coming out and saying, you need to vote blue to save our country. And again, that creates the permission structure for Republicans in states like Arizona, which Jeff Flake is from, to vote blue. So hopefully this changes the minds of some Republicans. Send this video to any Republicans in your life because we will be talking about all of the people who have turned their back on Donald Trump and said, this man is utterly incompetent. It is hilarious to me that MAGA claims Trump is a, quote, great businessman who, quote, hires the best people, yet his cabinet had a 92% turnover rate within his first year in office, and most of his closest advisors, his lawyers, his vice president have come out and said, this man has a childlike understanding of the world around him. So sit back, we have 38 days to go until the election and no time to waste. Let's break down some politics. All that I ask is that you leave a like, subscribe. Though before we dig into this video, the Jeff Flake released, I want to visit one of my favorite articles. It's titled 24 Former Trump Allies and Aides Who Turned Against Him. And this article explains, no person in U.S. politics, certainly no recent president, has such an expansive list of high-profile allies turned enemies. And this list is from a year ago, so some of these people have flip-flopped because they are spineless, but these are some very important quotes. Every Republican needs to listen or read this article. His vice president, Mike Pence, said, quote, the American people deserve to know that President Trump asked me to put him over my oath to the Constitution. Anyone who puts himself over the Constitution should never be President of the United States. His second Attorney General, Bill Barr, quote, someone who engaged in that kind of bullying about a process that is fundamental to our system and to our self-government shouldn't be anywhere near the Oval Office. His first Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, said, quote, Donald Trump is the first President in my lifetime who does not even try to unite the American people, does not even pretend to try. Instead, he divides us. His second Second Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper, quote, I think he's unfit for office. He puts himself before the country. His actions are all about him and not about the country. And then, of course, I believe he has integrity and character issues as well. It gets worse and worse. Chris Christie, someone who I would argue is out for himself. Um, H.R. McMaster, we saw the absence of leadership, really anti-leadership, and what that can do to our country. His third national security advisor, John Bolton, quote, I believe foreign leaders think he is a laughing fool. His first First ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, quote, he used to be good on foreign policy, and now he has started to walk it back and get weak in the knees when it comes to Ukraine. A terrible thing on January 6th and it happened, and he called it a beautiful day. Time and time again, these top Republicans say Trump is absolutely, woefully unequipped to be the president of the United States. This brings us on to former GOP senator from Arizona, Jeff Flake. If this could at least move Arizona by one percentage point, that is a win. Listen to his statement today. I'm a conservative Republican who had the honor to serve my home state of Arizona in the United States House of Representatives and in the Senate for nearly two decades. I believe that America is a great country. I believe that our best days lie ahead. I want to support a candidate for president who believes the same. I believe that we don't have to agree on every issue or policy, but that we should use the political process created by our founders to debate and to persuade, not disparage or demonize. 
I want to support a candidate who understands that political opponents are our fellow citizens, the loyal opposition as our parties once knew each other, not the enemy. Having spent the past three years overseas as a United States ambassador, I've seen up close that we have very real enemies abroad. We also have vital and indispensable allies. I want to support a presidential candidate who understands and appreciates the difference. I believe in our constitutional system and in the rule of law. And I want to support a candidate who respects the will of the voters and would never attempt to use the powers of the presidency to overturn an election after having been turned out by the voters. Finally, I want to support a presidential candidate who seeks to unite our country rather than one who divides us. One who represents the ideals of a new generation of leadership based not on grievances of the past, but hope for the future. For all of these reasons, I'll be supporting Kamala Harris for president and Tim Walz for vice president. I served with Kamala in the United States Senate. I've also served with Tim in the United States House of Representatives. I know them. I know firsthand of their fine character and their love of country. I would encourage all Republicans who feel this way to do the same. After all, in times like these, there is nothing more conservative than putting country over party. Let's go. That gave me chills at the end. Very well said from Jeff Flake. This is the type of Republican that we need to return to. The type of Republican that actually cares about the country. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody like Mitt Romney is secretly casting a ballot for VP Harris, even if he doesn't come out and endorse her straight up. Maybe he will. But people like this understand the threat that Trump poses. I mean, anybody who has read the fake elector document or the scheme, the fake elector scheme that Trump and Eastman put together, understands how nefarious this man is. How is my works and how instinctually authoritarian he is. I'm sure this man living in Arizona read all of the stuff about Maricopa County, all the shenanigans Trump tried to pull, and that probably persuaded him a lot. A few more of these because I just absolutely love them. His Secretary of Transportation, Elaine Chao, Donald Trump's Secretary of Transportation, said, quote, at a particular point, the events were such that it was impossible for me to continue. Given my personal values and philosophy, she then resigned after January 6th. His former lawyer, and fixer. Michael Cohen, Donald's an idiot. Ty Cobb, his White House lawyer. Trump relentlessly puts forth claims that are not true. His first Homeland Security advisor, Tom Bossert, said, quote, the president undermined American democracy baselessly for months. As a result, he's culpable for the siege and an utter disgrace. And finally, this one always gives me chills. His second chief of staff, John Kelly, called Donald Trump, quote, a person that has nothing but contempt for our democratic institutions, our constitution, and the rule of law. There is nothing more that can be said. God help us. There is a repeated pattern of Republicans coming out and saying they cannot vote for Donald Trump. And what does that tell you? If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, drop a blue heart, hit that subscribe button. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video and peace out.